Hey, welcome, uh, Chris Stone, Kingfish Ingram. Welcome to E-Town. Uh, thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. You thank are you. a soulful player and a soulful singer. Thank you. And uh, you've been writing, uh, you've been writing songs about that. I know you're, there's a song on your record called "Been Here Before." Uh, is that have people been telling you that, that that you're an old soul? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you like your family told you that, or where did you? Pretty much from, pretty much from family to to uh, people around town to yeah to different people who came and watched me, uh, you know, play back home. So yes, sir, a lot. Yeah. Now um, I'm assuming that you. Uh, you grew up in a musical household, and you probably sang in church. Oh yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. My mom, my mom sings, and on her side of the family, uh, all of my uncles and aunts, they, you know, all of them preach in church, and they sing in the choir, and they, and they all play guitar. So she was taking me around them a lot, as you know, around an early age, you know, to like different gospel programs and stuff. Yeah. So they were pretty much like my first, you know, inspiration. You know, yeah. my first inspiration. You know. I should um, I should mention that your mom has a great name, Princess Pride, <laughs> and she's Charlie Pride's first cousin. Yep. Yeah. First cousin. Yeah. That's wild. And um, so so it was uh, it was singing and 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 uh, more of a gospel scene than a country scene. What you were listening to when you were a kid? Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, I had pretty much like my mom had all like all the gospel stuff and all like the you know soul and R and B stuff. While my dad and brother had the hip hop. So. I was exposed to like country until later, you know. So when you're a kid, and I understand you started out by playing drums, and you went to bass, and then you went to guitar. Yeah, uh, drums were that was the church thing, yeah. and uh, when I went to bass, is when uh, my parents enrolled me in the Delta Blues and Arts and Education program uh, back home in Clarksdale, and um, I started on guitar, but felt like my fingers were too big for the strings, so I seen the bass, and I was like, let me try that. And from when I went over there, man, it was it was great. And yeah. I started playing. How old were you then? Admin eight. And then <laughs> and then like around like ten or eleven, that's when I got good enough to play like shows around town. And I was I was like the backup bass player kid. If you if the band's bass player couldn't make it to the show, they would call me. Oh cool. So So you're you're eleven years old and you're playing in bars that you can't even get into. Yeah. 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 You're yeah, playing from, juke joints. And, and and at that time, they start up from sundown to sun up, so we would start at six p.m. and end at like two a.m. or three. Yeah. So, uh, so then there's school. no breaks. Then there's school. <laughs> Pretty right? much, yeah. yeah. And I and, and I went to school too. Yeah. Like, like the next day, <laughs> and even when I traveled on the road while I was in school, my teachers they would give me like homework and stuff to take on the road. Yeah. And like during my last few years of high school, we started working from a laptop. So any work I did, I would just email them while I was out. That's so wild. Now, <clears throat> now your kids uh, in, your, in your classes, the other kids in school, they're probably not listening to the same kind of music you're listening to, right? Right. What are they, they're listening to hip yeah, hop and rap. The, and all the, all the Lil Yachty's, and I'm pretty sure y'all don't know who that is, but all the Lil Yachty's and the, and, the, and the Lil Uzi's and all them type of things. Yeah. And then, uh, and you've got your, 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 your phone, your plugs in, and yeah, you're like, listening to, to what? Like, like I get an example, if the teacher said, y'all can take y'all phones out and listen to music, everybody else is listening to all those two guys I just named. And I'm listening to like Elmore James, you know, Son House, BB, Freddie, <laughs> Abbott, you know, Gary Moore, Prince, you know, the whole yeah. this goes on. And so did that did that make the other your your other uh, classmates think you were like odd or, or strange? Oh most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. They would come up to me and say, Man, why would you listen to that old boy and sad? I'm like, Well man, I I mean, of you know, of course it's sad. Not all blues are sad, but the stuff that I was listening to is pretty sad, you know. But <laughs> you know, but you know, you have to I was looking at it from like a cultural Thing and it's history, you know, and yeah. and that's the same thing I would tell them, you know, everything that you're listening to now, that is where this came from. Yeah. So, you know. That's cool. That's cool. And so did you get any, and then of course you start playing the clubs and then they probably think you're cool after all. Yeah, they had asked me, uh, like, like uh, certain clubs in town has like certain, like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, um, I, I'm blanking on it. But uh, they would say, hey, are you playing at Reds this weekend? I'm like, I'm playing there. They was like, can we come? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that one, but yeah. yeah. Now, when did you start writing songs? Uh, well, I would always write songs when I was like around 12 and 13, like gigging and stuff, but I felt like they were crap, you know? So I felt like I didn't write my first good song until 
age 15, and that was outside of this town. Because, outside of this town. And yeah, and the reason being because that was the first time that I actually took a real life experience of mine and actually put it on paper rather than writing other songs or singing about stuff I didn't hear, you know, yeah. that I know I didn't go through, you know. Right, because you're, you're writing songs, uh, even now you're writing songs about women and booze and all the bluesy stuff, but I can imagine when you were 16 and writing songs like that, that you're just making it up. You're just like... Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie. I experienced heartbreak at 16, but, you know, it wasn't, you know, it, you know, it wasn't to the point where I wanted to you know, like, you know, you know, drown my sorrows and booze and nothing like that, you know, so, you know, I mean, I've, I've definitely, I've definitely experienced some things in my lifetime, you know, but it ain't, at it, you know, it's not as severe as, you know, the forefathers went yeah. through, but, you know. Sure. I definitely got some blues there. Yeah, no kidding. Man. No, listen, I, that, you, you're writing some great songs, and, and the song you wrote when you were 15 or 16, Out of This Town, is, is, a, is a really good song. Thank and you. it's uh, and, and it's about probably feeling that, that uh, Tight knit community and wanting to wanting to break out a little bit. Right. You know? Right. Um, well, how old were you when you played at the White House for Michelle Obama? Man, uh, that I think I was about fourteen. Fourteen, yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. No, no, no. Fifteen because it was in two thousand fourteen. So sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so then you put your first record out and it debuts number one on the blues chart, Billboard blues chart. Um, you had just turned 20, is that right? When the record came out? Uh, yeah, back in January. Back in January. And it, and it came out in May. Okay, so you turned 20 in January, the record came out in May, yeah. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so you said goodbye to your teenage years and then you stepped up the big time. You've already accomplished all this stuff. <laughs> and now you're touring, you're traveling around, you're headlining shows of your own. Um, what's surprising? I mean, you'd already spent time in the bars, you'd already played all the clubs, you'd, you know, you'd paid your dues. Now you're traveling around. Um, what's, what's surprising to you? I mean, honestly, to put all of it in a nutshell, I didn't think all of this was going to come fast, you know, from the, you know, album, you know, debuting at number one and everyone loving it. It's just, you know, I, I felt like one day it was going to come, but I didn't think it was going to come this early. So, you know, honestly, so with all, you know, long story short, all, all of it's overwhelming. Yeah. yeah so. Well, you're up to the challenge, man. You sound great. You, you really play amazingly. And, you know, and there on your record, there's Kev Mo, there's Buddy Guy playing on your record. Yes, sir. How old were you when you met Buddy Guy? Probably around that same time, right? I was, I was 14, and I opened a show for him in Virginia. And then, like, years passed, and then we got a chance to, like, officially meet and sit down um, in Portland, Oregon at the Waterfront Blues Festival. And that was the first time I, like, officially met him and got a chance to play with him that same night as well. Yeah. And, uh... He's he's proud of you, doesn't he? He calls you like so. the future of the blues. He's 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 all excited about you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the that's the OG as we like to call him. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, listen, we we've, we've got a lot more music to come uh, to get to. Um, I was just impressed by the fact that you get so many different tones out of your guitar, and I was thinking maybe if we kind of go over to where your guitar and your amp and your rig is, maybe you just. Just give us a little, uh, give us a little tour of some of your sounds that you're getting with your electric guitar. Well, um, as far as my pedal board, I'm only using three pedals. Well, actually, it's three pedals on the board. There's only one can use, and that's the distortion. Yeah. Um, distortion. And the wah wah pedal. Yeah, wah wah pedal and the tuner. Yeah. And um, I'm using a, a LP uh, made by a friend of mine on the East Coast, Fender Strat, and uh, I alternate between amps. Uh, sometimes I use a PV, sometimes I use a Fender. Tonight we're using a Fender Deluxe. Yeah. Which I think belongs to you. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds good. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. Sounds better than I can make it sound, that's for sure. Man, I, Doesn't sound like that. We're not going to get it. into that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Well, let's, let's go over there and just maybe just, just uh, pick up your guitar and just give us a little bit of a, 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 a tour of your, your, your tone. So you said this is a super simple pedal board, and you're right. This is just, you got a tuner, you've got a, you've got a distortion pedal, and you've got a, the world's smallest wah-wah pedal. <laughs> For, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I have the wah. It has these like three different positions on the, on the inside. I'm on the middle position. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a regular wah, you know, if I want to do stuff like... <laughs> Like that. 
And um, distortion, um, like when it comes to like blues, so I, I, I like a lot of hamburger stuff like Otis Rush and Albert King. And um, when it comes to Gary Mutton, I get stuff like this. So. And that's it. Well, that's not it. Because uh, that's not it. Because I just heard you play some stuff that sounded so, it was, it was clean, and you're getting like a BB tone out of this, uh, you know, a nice, clean, warm sound out of the same instrument. Yeah, that's like, you know, if I want to do like the jump blues stuff that BB did, you know. Uh... Yeah. All right. And there's a, there's a lot more in between, I know. But I just, I appreciate you just giving us the quick tour. And meanwhile, we'll, uh, we'll get back to music. Welcome back to E-Town, if you would. Uh, Chris Stone, Kingfish, Ingram, yeah. along with his band. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind the scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>